It's now my great pleasure to, int to introduce to you this year's commencement speaker, Mr. Gary Kunith. It's fair to say that Mr. Kunith's accomplishments are testament to the tremendous heights a UC graduate can reach in pursuit of his or her dream. Many graduates of this institution have enjoyed great success in their professional lives. Mr. Kunith has achieved greatness by empowering others to do the same, something he is uniquely qualified to do. A member of the class of 1979, he founded the Summit Group, a thought leader in the area of value creation, recognized by Selling Power Magazine as one of the top sales and management development companies in the world. Mr. Kunith has been called upon numerous times by both global corporations and the United States government to apply his ex expertise in matters relating to trade and commerce. His approach was crucial in the development of trade agreements between the United States and some of his principal trading partners, such as China, the United Kingdom, Japan, and Germany. And for his many accomplishments, he was named Businessman of the Year for the United States and was formally recognized at a dinner hosted by the President of the United States. Mr. Kuhn's vision and initiative have found expression in a, in a diversity of forms. He has lectured extensively to students at some of the top graduate business schools in the country. He is an equity partner in Bite Tech, a maker of performance athletic mouthwear. He is owner of several professional baseball teams in partnership with Bill Murray, Jimmy Buffett, and Mike Veek. He is also an author and a much sought after public speaker. And I am proud to say he is a trustee of Utica College. It is now my honor to welcome this year's commencement speaker, Mr. Gary Kunith. I don't know what you just said. All right, but acknowledge it. Well, good morning, graduating class of 2011. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. You know, I understand that this is the largest graduating class in the history of Utica College. How about that? But standing up here, it's also abundantly clear to me that not only is this the largest graduating class, but it's also the best looking and most attractive graduating class in the history of Utica College. I didn't think I'd get much pushback on that one. I can't even tell you how proud I am to be here. I mean, this is, it's, it's like a dream come true. It really is. I'm excited, I, I couldn't sleep. And, and this is something that I've always, always dreamed about. And I wanted to do the right thing and make you proud. So as I was preparing for this, I decided to take a look at prior commencement speakers, just to kind of see how high the bar had been set. So I learned that in the past they've had movie stars, television stars, syndicated talk show hosts, five-star generals, and an astronaut. An astronaut. <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I can't compete with those credentials. Are you kidding me? And you know, then I thought, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something that I have that none of them have that makes me special. There's something that I can say that none of them can say, including the astronaut. I am a Utica College graduate, baby. That's right. And I'm pretty proud of that. Of course, being an astronaut is pretty cool, too. I thought I would start you off and put, put it in perspective you could understand. I'm going to start you off with a pop quiz. Oh, how quickly you turn. Did I mention you were an attractive group? <laughs> pop quiz, round one. Here we go. Can you name the five wealthiest people in the world? No, and President Hutton's around 14, just behind Warren Buffett. <laughs> All right, not seeing a lot of answers. How about the last five winners of the Miss Universe pageant? And uh, guys, Hooters girls don't count on that one, okay? How about, can you name 10 people who have won the Nobel or Pulitzer Prize? You see, those names don't come very easily, but you know what, that's okay. I'm grading on a curve. 
Pop quiz round two. Can you name three friends who've helped you through a difficult time in your life? Yeah. Can you name three people who have taught you something worthwhile in your life? Yeah. How about, can you name a few people who have made you feel special and appreciated throughout your life? Yeah. Really appreciated, evidently. Here's my point. The people who make a difference in your lives, they're not the ones with the most money or the most awards or the most titles. The people who make a difference in your lives are the people who care most about you. Now, when you look around here, this auditorium is filled with people who care about you, who love you, who are proud of you. For instance, take a look up here. I mean, just take a look. This is like a hockey game. It's filled, right? Your moms, your dads, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, they're all here because this day, for them, represents the culmination of all their hopes and dreams they have for you, of all the hard work and the sacrifices and the support they've given to you so that their son or daughter or husband or wife could have the best life possible. You see, this isn't just your graduation today. This is their graduation too. Congrats, families, you did it. <laughs> The other thing is, look at around you, the faculty, the professors, the coaches, the leadership of the college, the staff. You know, they are here because this is the best part of their jobs. It is. To see such beautifully talented and gifted people, and I mean that, accomplish something that no one on the face of this planet will ever be able to take from you. Never. And just to think that maybe they had maybe just this much to do with it, man, that makes what they do all worthwhile. You know, some might argue that they come to work for a paycheck, but I would argue that today is their payday. And then I want you to look around right amongst you. These are your classmates, your roommates, your teammates in some cases, your friends who have been with you for four years or more, who started with you, and now here they are at the finish line with you, graduating with you. And what I want to point out about this is never again in your life will all of these people ever be assembled under one roof, ever again. So soak it in, savor every second, because this is a great day. Now, you are now equipped with skills and knowledge to go out and make a living, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about making a life. Anyone can make a living, but not many people can have a good life. So I'm going to give you my three points of life, if I may. Life lesson number one, money doesn't make you rich. It is not about net worth. It is all about life worth. And life worth is the joy and contentment you get from life. Now look, when you leave here, you're all going to go to work, you're all going to get jobs and work hard and earn money and, and secure your future for you and your family. And you know what? That's exactly what you should do. What I'm suggesting to you is just don't focus on net worth at the expense of life worth. And many people do that. Many people think that if you get high net worth, that life worth comes automatically. I'm telling you, it doesn't. I got caught up in that spin cycle myself. I know from experience, it doesn't. I know a lot of people with very high net worths that I would consider miserable failures as human beings. Yeah, you know, they got a lot of money, and they got big houses, and they got nice cars, but you know what? They can't even tell you what their children's favorite color is. They can't even tell you the favorite book their kids ever read, or any book they ever read. So yeah, they got money in the bank, but they got nothing. And then on the other hand, I know people who are barely making ends meet or are struggling to try to pay their bills. And you know what? They're some of the happiest, most content, and successful people I know. And my definition of success, by the way, is applause at home. That's what I think success is. I think you should invest your time in things that bring value to your life. 
Because let me tell you something, no one cares what kind of cool car you drove when you were 35 or the square footage of the largest house you've ever owned. No one cares. That's not your legacy. Your legacy is, what kind of a son or daughter were you? What kind of a husband or wife were you? What kind of a mom or a dad were you? Or how good a friend were you? Or did you make a difference in somebody's life? Is the planet a little bit better because you roamed it? That's what matters. Remember this, the best things in life are not things. The best things in life are unconditional love, staying true to your principles. <laughs> staying true to your principles and your values, not rushing through life's experiences but stopping and savoring it as though they'll never happen again, like today. It's about appreciating and valuing the beauty of family and giving without any expectation of getting anything in return. This is what matters in life. It's not about cash, it's about contentment. Life lesson number two, the three greatest gifts. The three greatest gifts I believe you can give your children and your family, and here's the good part, they're free, so they fit within your budget. Right? The three greatest gifts, time, memories, and tradition. Give your family your time, time to get to know you, time to enjoy you, time to bond with you, time to love you deeper than they do already. Give them tradition, something that lives on long after you. And give them memories. You know, I think memories are the most powerful life force we have available to us. I really do. When you think about it, Memories have kept prisoners of war alive. They've sped up recovery times. They've healed the sick. Memories have kept families close when they were miles apart. They're a source of laughter, a source of hope. But most importantly, memories represent your life's legacy. When, when people remember you, what do you want them to say about you? And ultimately, memories are the only thing you're ever gonna have at the end. It won't be money or any type of material things, because I got news for you. When you die, everything goes back in the box, including you, right? Please make this a priority in your life. If you have great memories, you will always have a place to go when times are tough. Life lesson number three, believe in something bigger than you. I hate to say this, but bad things happen to good people. You're gonna experience great things that are gonna give you high highs, and unfortunately, you're gonna experience things that are not so nice, and these things can be big. Loss of a loved one, sickness, financial disaster, addictions, these things happen. These things cross our paths. Adversity plays no favorites, and adversity finds us all. You will not miss it. It will come to you. So you have to believe, I think, you have to believe in something bigger than you because these things are so much bigger than us. You have to have a way to be strong and stay strong because these things will crush you if you try to stand alone. And the truth be told, we need adversity in our lives. We really do. It's the only way you can figure out who you really are. Look, anyone can be a rock star when things are perfect. But when things aren't so good, then the real you comes out. That's how you find out who you are. And how you respond to adversity can either extinguish you or distinguish you. It is your call. So, those are my three points of life. Well, wait, one more thing. Have fun. Have fun. Life's too short to not have fun. Are you kidding me? You know what my life's motto is? I want to die as young as I can, as late as I can. That's my game plan right there. Huh? <laughs> On my tombstone, it's going to read, cause of death, life. <laughs> Listen, when you leave here today, it's going to be your turn at bat in the game of life. Don't you get cheated on that. You go to the plate and you swing at good pitches. 
and you take three hard cuts and you swing for the fences and you touch all the bases. You know why? Because you don't want to be 80 years old sitting on your porch saying, oh, I wished I had. You want to be rocking in that chair going, yeah, I'm glad I did. Now, I'm going to end on this final thought. Life really is, is easy. We have a tendency to overcomplicate it. Be good, do good. It's pretty much it, right? But I'm going to prove to you how easy and how simple life really is. I'm going to summarize everything I've just told you, and frankly, everything I think you're ever going to need to know about life. I'm going to summarize using an excerpt from a small children's story written by a gentleman named Theodore Geisel. You know him better as Dr. Seuss, and I will end with this. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes, and you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you can choose whatever direction you go. You'll be on the way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers. You'll soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun because unslumping yourself is not easily done. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. Just be sure when you step that you step with great tact. And just remember that life's just one big balancing act. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 99.9% .9 guaranteed. So graduating class of 2011. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so be on your way. Congratulations, thank you, I'm so proud of you. Geez, not bad for a trustee. <laughs> Gary, thank you so very much.